After six painstaking years of constantly buying and swapping between different hard drives and file storage solutions, I finally took the plunge and invested in what I hope will be a permanent solution to my file storage system for video editing, a network attached storage or NAS. Let me kick off this video by starting with the requirements that I thought would best fit my needs since that ultimately factored into my final decision. So for storage, I'd like between 25 and 40 terabytes. I currently use around four terabytes every two years editing 4K footage, but I imagine that will continue to increase over time. And I'm hoping that the solution I choose would last me close to 10 years, but even if it doesn't, that's fine since it sounds like the new technology for NAS should be revisited every five to seven years. Now for workflow, I wanted to make sure the solution I choose would allow direct editing of source files from my NAS without any lag when scrubbing in the project timelines. And then for utility, anything that would allow me to spend less time thinking about the technical requirements of file storage and allow me to purely focus on creating would be absolutely desirable. So after factoring in many different decisions, I ultimately went with the QNAP 4Bay TVS 472 XT that was released in 2018. Close runner-ups were the Synology 4Bay DS923 Plus and the QNAP TVS 474, both of which were released in late 2022 with the newest tech. All right, so now you have uh, an idea of my requirements and what I ultimately choose. Let me jump into my rationale for why I made this choice. Right, keep in mind, the big picture here was a NAS system that would primarily be used for video editing. Though I know I'll also be doing a bit of photo editing, uh, I didn't really care to optimize for that since I figured my solution would be suitable for both in the grand scheme of things. Okay, so now let's start by talking about the different NAS brands. You know, when researching which NAS would be ideal, two brands really stood out. Synology or QNAP. I wasn't very familiar with QNAP, but I've heard a lot about Synology from the creator community since I was already leaning in that direction. Unfortunately, the decision was harder than I had expected, and I kept swapping between Synology and QNAP brands in my cart over a two-day period. The various hardware configurations in each helped me make that final decision. One of which was the negative reviews of the Synology DS923 Plus, their newest 4-bay lineup released a few months ago. And then this consistently appeared because of Synology's switch in architecture from Intel to AMD, a lack of a 2.5 gigabyte network support, and the lack of hardware transcoding for individuals that use Plex. Now for me personally, I'm not entirely sure I need hardware transcoding since I don't, I don't really plan to do any type of media streaming, but you know, who knows, maybe that'll change and I didn't really want FOMO. Also, even though the DS923 Plus had one gigabyte connections, they also have an optional one port or two port 10 gigabyte upgrade that could be purchased separately for $160 and $300 respectively. Nevertheless, the negative commentary around the 923 Plus was ultimately a deterrent. Another notable difference between the two brands was their strengths. Synology excels in their user experience and usability of their software, but QNAP excels in their hardware. The former was great for novice users and the latter for individuals that wanted the best bang for their buck. Now, because of this, I was in strong favor of Synology and was going to pick up their DS923+, DS1522+, or their DS1621 XS+, for the user experience alone. But ultimately, I thought the trade-off with QNAP's better hardware was worth it. Besides, how difficult can it be to use considering I'm not completely inept in tech? Also, I did consider older versions of Synology along with their six bay options, but I had budget constraints there and really didn't want to exceed the $1,500 uh, budget on the enclosure itself and ideally be under $1,000 since I'd still need to purchase additional drivers, adapters, and cables. 
QNAP came out a clear winner here since most of their options allowed me to stay more in line with my budget and requirements. The utility was also important for me as well in that I didn't want to buy a ton of adapters and cables just to access my NAS. This boiled down to NAS enclosures that had Thunderbolt access since I switched to a M1 MacBook Pro earlier this year and plan to do all my video and photo editing there. Now, this wasn't initially an important factor for me, but it grew over time as I looked at the cost of adding a bunch of adapters to make a 10 gigabyte connection work, which seemed to be the most ideal network speed for editing 4K videos, especially ones that include multi-cam. For example, going with a NAS enclosure that didn't have a Thunderbolt connection usually meant buying a 10 gigabyte adapter for my NAS, 10 gigabyte switches, and a Thunderbolt to 10 gigabyte adapter for my Mac. Lastly, my utility preferences makes this choice of brand super easy since QNAP went in the direction of supporting Thunderbolt natively in their X72 series and Synology appears to be solely supporting ethernet connections. All right, another concept I looked into was SSD caching. There are way better articles on the web that go into this, so I'm not going to deep dive into it. In short, many of the NAS systems I looked at had M2 NVMe slots that allowed for SSD caching, and I wanted to take advantage of it. I thought of it as analogous to RAM, in which my most commonly used files would be stored on the SSD for quicker access. In my video edits, I usually have a lot of smaller files I work with, like thumbnails, small clips, and pictures, in addition to a single large video file. Thus, it sounded like I'd be able to benefit from SSD caching, at least in theory. To make this happen, it's important to evaluate the PCIe generation on the NAS and buy the appropriate ones so your speed is not bottlenecked by either the NAS or the SSD. If I didn't want the utility of connecting to my NAS via Thunderbolt, I would have easily gone with the QNAP X74 series that was just released at the end of 2022. Given the hardware upgrades like the Intel 12th gen processors, the first commercial NAS to do so, and the fourth generation PCIe slots over its predecessors, the X72 series, which utilized third generation PCIe slots. Now, however, given all the other factors, especially the cost and utility of having Thunderbolt with the QNAP X72 series, I still went with the QNAP 472 since I thought it'd be sufficient for my needs. For my choice of M2 NVMe SSDs, I ended up purchasing two one terabyte Samsung 980 Pros, which are fourth generation and come with heat sinks. Now it's important to note that the user manuals for the 472 states that all of the M2 NVMe SSDs should have a heat sink installed, but you have to do it manually. And because I was lazy, I opted for the one terabyte Samsung 980 Pros. Otherwise, I would have gone with the 500 gigabyte Samsung 980s, which were PCIe generation three times four and came in at a whopping 50% cheaper. I'll be bottlenecked, unfortunately, by my NAS enclosure, but I figured I could you know, repurpose or resell the SSD in the future if needed. And next we have RAID levels. And of course we can't talk about NAS without mentioning this since that's one of the primary advantages when considering a NAS system, redundancy. RAID levels are something else that needs to be factored in and similar to before, I won't go into detail about it since there are better explanations on the web. For me, it basically boiled down to using RAID 5 if I went with the four bay, RAID 6 if I went with the six bay, and RAID 10 if I had a lot of money since data is mirrored and I'm gonna lose 50% of my storage. I went with a RAID 5 for a good balance between storage, performance, and redundancy since I purchased a four bay, but I would have gone with a RAID 6 if I had the six bay. I just couldn't justify the cost of sacrificing 50% of my storage with RAID 10 at this time, but would consider that in the future. Now as for the actual choice of hard drives, I plan on using with my NAS, I chose to go with the Seagate 8 terabyte Iron Wolf, primarily because it was what most others went with, followed by Western Digital. I didn't go beyond eight terabytes as the price started to quickly add up. And with RAID 5 with four bays, I'd have at least 24 terabytes of storage that should be sufficient for my needs. Further, 
I didn't choose the Iron Wolf Pro since reviews noted it could be quite noisy, and I planned on having my NAS just a few feet away from my desk. If it was in the basement, I probably would have gone with the Iron Wolf Pros due to their extended warranty of five versus three years, higher performance of 220 versus 180 megabytes per second, and longer lifespan of 300 terabytes per year versus 100 terabytes per year. Since I went with QNAP, I'd have to make a decision about which of their operating systems to use, the QTS Hero or QTS. As I to the above, I won't go into detail here, and I will simply say that I went with QTS because of one, it seemed to be the most common for video editing purposes, which suits my needs, and then two, it allowed me to use tiered storage with Qtier, which QTS Hero simply doesn't allow for. The last remaining decision I had to make was in regards to the direct Thunderbolt connection between my NAS and my Mac. I'm a huge fan of future-proofing and ultimately chose to pay a premium for Thunderbolt 4 cables that I picked up from Apple that will allow me to more consistently reach higher speeds of 40 gigabytes per second once my hardware supported it. Though, I'm sure the Thunderbolt 3 would have been more than sufficient since it can also support up to 40 gigabytes, but the Thunderbolt 4 should be more reliable in getting me those consistent speeds if and when I get that hardware. I don't edit videos 24 seven, so the utility of reusing the Thunderbolt 4 in other scenarios may be helpful. Firstly, I think my choice here is a bit of an overkill, probably not something I recommend since I think I'll only need 10 gigabytes to have no lag and scrubbing project timelines in either Final Cut or Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, so that wraps up the key factors that I had to make in choosing the NAS system that I'll be using going into 2023. I imagine that I'll hit a few roadblocks along the way once I start using my NAS and some choices I may have to circle back on. However, I'm hoping this will be a good start to optimizing my workflow for years to come. If you're in the market for a NAS system, let me know what your thoughts are going into 2023. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.